Arena for the last time this season. The top offense in Conference USA and one of the best defenses in the country. Western Kentucky and Louisiana Tech about to clash for the second time this season. The first one was good. Western Kentucky held on to win that one. And now the grudge match and Big Red on hand with a large crowd in attendance. They're trying to sell it out here in Diddle Arena and the energy is pronounced. Western Kentucky wanting to take that top spot in Conference USA going into the tournament. They won five in a row, but they lost their last one. And alongside Craig McCormick, I'm Jonathan Mathis. The message pregame was, hey, it might be a Wednesday night time. A lot of people go to church, but they might need to bring the Holy Spirit with them because the Bulldogs have more bite this time. They sure do. You know, when you focus on their players, uh, Talik Chavez is one of the best three-point shooters in Conference USA. Uh, shoots about 70% of his threes from deep and is pretty proficient at it. Uh, Average about uh, 20 over his last three games, so he knows how to score. And then for Western Kentucky, their main task, slow down Daniel Bacho and Rodney Howard might be the antidote. Well, Rodney Howard had a big game against them last time. Had 18 points, but 10 for 11 at the at the free throw line. So he put a lot of pressure on Bacho and also Isaiah Crawford, another great player for Louisiana Tech. He fouled both of them out in that game. Steve Lutz wasn't exactly thrilled with the week of practice, but he also said that's not exactly indicative of how the game co goes, and he needs them to pick it up tonight. Yeah, he was uh, in, in briefly talking to him. He, he was uh, he got after a squad yesterday. He was very disappointed in their effort last meeting against Middle Tennessee last Saturday night. Uh, Western lost by two, uh, didn't score in the last two minutes, 18 seconds of that ball game, but uh, effort. Uh, coach Lutz is an effort type of a coach. He wants it on both ends of the floor, especially defensively, rebounding, 50-50 balls. You just saw Talvin Hester just a minute ago. He's getting all the effort he could want defensively from his Bulldogs. And they're looking to utilize the boost of Chavez and keep Bobcho and Isaiah Crawford on the floor tonight. Last time out, down in Ruston, Virginia, or Louisiana, Bacho and Crawford both fouled out. Here's Babakar Ba. Back to him. Wraps around Bacho into the corner. Allen a three. That was two good kickouts out of the post. He felt the uh, fate, felt the pressure on the inside and was able to kick it back out two times. Dante Allen, one of the best three-point shooters in Conference USA also. And he's struggling a little bit of late, but gets off the schneid perfectly with that shot. But when he gathers his feet up underneath him, he's deadly. If he fades, that's when he's not as effective. And there's an answer from Devin Ree. Folks down here over here in the Commonwealth might recognize him. He spent his freshman year in Louisville, but he didn't get as much floor time as he wanted and found himself in Louisiana Tech. They weren't exactly sure he was going to fit into the system, but he's starting now after being hard time practicing to start off with. Don McHenry gets into the act. I think this is one of the uh, important factors for Coach Lutz and the Western Kentucky team is getting Don McHenry started early. Three from the corner. Not able to go two for two. Rebound chased down by Babakar. Tyrone Marshall Jr. to Brandon Newman. He has not been shooting the ball well. Western is doing a lot of uh, high ball screens, and he they set a great off, off the ball pick for him to get wide open. And Newman's a guy, he, he brings the effort defensively. He's been staying in the gym through shooting the troubles, and if they, uh, he's a guy if they can get going. He, he proved it earlier this season, but he has kind of had that mild slump, shooting about 31, 32% on the year from three-point range. He can shoot much better than that, just has to rebuild that confidence. Here's Newman, very crafty with the ball, great assist man, the top in the Conference USA. Now Isaiah Crawford, maybe the best player in the conference. Sets up Newman who misses the three and here come the Hilltoppers. Marshall from distance, just off the mark. And Mar Marshall has struggled of late. Uh, he started off the year very well 
but uh, of late he's uh, he's not scoring. McHenry looking for Fa. Boy, Bacho takes up quite a bit of room in there, doesn't he? He does. He's <laughs> the best shot blocker in Conference USA. And you can see that he was the missing piece when they got him in November. That was the moment that Talvin Hester said, we got something going. And Ree has something going tonight. That's a second made three. Well, you know, speaking of about Bacho there, he's averaging 10 rebounds a game, two and a half blocks. He's a, one of the leaders up there in the country. And he can score about 15 a game. So, you know, he's a great all-around pl player for this Louisiana Tech squad. You saw Western Kentucky racing up the floor. Newman with four points in a hurry. Attacking Newman again, the other one. And we do have two in this game, so folks. We got Sean Newman Jr., the point guard for Louisiana Tech. Brandon Newman, the Purdue transfer from Western Kentucky. And there's the effort from Chavez, trying to keep the ball alive, not able to get there in time. Talik Chavez, the skill set they knew, and Talvin Hester saw him in high school. They're from the same area, Arlington, Texas. They knew he could score. He was an elite scorer, but he had to come and play defense, and he's been playing just as hard as everyone else on the Bulldogs as Allen misses a three. Here's Isaiah Crawford. Oh, he's smooth and draws a foul on Marshall. Boy, he had a head of steam coming down the floor. It just opened up on the left side for him to be able to attack the goal. You know, he came in uh, with a lot of preseason. Uh, he was preseason player of the year, was a pick. Maybe he didn't start the year the best, but he has been coming on here of late, playing much better, much more consistent. That one well short. But speaking of coming on lately, he was one of two players last game in their win against New Mexico State on the road that played all 40 minutes. And that was a conversation Hester had said, hey, it's late in the season, we need you. And he's like, all right. Well, yeah, and he, he, got, the, uh, he got the conference honors for player of the week for his performance on those two road games. Left both of them at the line. It's a one-point ball game. 16 to go here in the first. There's McHenry. This is right where he likes it, too. Good closeout by Newman. Good hesitation, Babacho. I don't think he got a hand on it. McHenry thinks he did. Was it a shot clock violation? And we'll take our first break. Western Kentucky off to a quick start, but Louisiana Tech by virtue of two threes, keeping pace. 9-8 here in Diddle. Welcome back, Conference USA action here on ESPN, and a close one. Everyone is expecting, Craig, that this would be a great game, and we're off to a good start. Oh, we sure are. You know, a lot of action so far in the first four minutes of this ball game. You know, we talked about uh, Western Kentucky averaging 80 points a game, leads the conference. Alternatively, Louisiana Tech, great defense. They only give up 63 a game and defend the field goal the best in the conference. So we've got some dynamics that are going on between these two squads, and uh, we've seen a good start. And to Ill further your point, who's the most, who has the best adjusted tempo? Who's the fastest team in the country? The whole United States, that is Western Kentucky. And Louisiana Tech, ninth best defense. Of scoring defense, at least. They might say they're the best. They feel good about it. And a three from the corner by Dravon Mangum. Boy, Mangum uh, really delivered in the first meeting between these two squads. He ended up uh, making five three-pointers. He was five of 10 in that game. He played every minute of it, 23 points worth. And he began his collegiate career back in the distant year of 2018. Newman a glancing blow, Brandon that is. Allen just saves it to McHenry, and the floater does not fall down. Newman Jr. to Bacho. Into the camera well, and it's Western Kentucky basketball. Well, you can see that play develop. Uh, Bacho showed him the hand to get the lob up there, but he was running hard to get to the rim, but uh, it just couldn't. He, he just ran out of room. Don McHenry likes to see a couple easy baskets to go in. Right now he's trying to set up Allen, and you can count it, and he's going to the line. Kind of stumbling, bumbling down that left side of the lane, but was able to finish with the left hand. 
Dante Allen is not really known for his drives, uh, but on occasion, he, he can deliver with those. Yeah, they like how he puts pressure defensively with his shooting touch. He doesn't have it at the free throw line, though. A 73% free throw shooter misses that one, and we're tied at 11. John Newman Jr. down to Daniel Bacho. And that's what Louisiana Tech wants to see a lot of tonight. Well, Howard uh, for Western Kentucky flipped out on the on this on the uh, changeover, and nobody picked up Bacho. He had a nice uh, access to the rim. Now here's the player we highlighted, Rodney Howard. They swarm him. Louisiana Tech doing a great job digging down. Seven point first half so far for Brandon Newman, who's feeling it tonight. As we mentioned uh, a little bit earlier, he, he has struggled, but uh, this is a good outcome that Coach Lutz would like to see out of Newman. And that is the top three-point shooter in Conference USA and one of the best in the country, Talik Chavez getting into the act. Howard on the wraparound. Great drop step by Howard. He uses his left as much as his right. I like the pace of this game, don't you? Too. This is fun. How do, how do you guard that when someone can go both ways inside? It's tough, and that's why uh, that, that's why he put so much pressure on uh, Bacho for Louisiana Tech. They're looking at him again. McHenry uh, through the five hole of Bacho. Everyone hits the floor. Our first jump ball, and it will go to the Bulldogs. Sometimes that's one of the faults, I guess, if you want to say about Don McHenry, is he can over dribble at times. That time he got himself up in the air with no place to go and tried to pass the ball. No room for Howard to catch it. They, they said, Steve Lutz, that they've liked how he's been better with the ball, better as a passer this year, but he has struggled a little bit of late Dose overall. Well, he got forced in. He came into the program uh, to play the two position, and uh, Jackson was a point guard for Western Kentucky that went down early this year with an ankle injury, and it forced McHenry over to take that uh, point guard spot. He went through a learning curve, but he, he can score. Here's a Louisiana Tech lifer, Will Allen, a native of New Orleans, 50% free throw shooter. His brother, Willie, was an offensive tackle for Louisiana Tech, and he is one of eight siblings. Or no, he is one of nine. He has eight siblings. <laughs> wow. Large family. It sounds, sounds like athletic, too, though. Yeah, they could practice double teams. They had so many. But the free throw line struggles continue as Sean Newman, great hustle by the Bulldog point guard. And he takes it to the rack, but it doesn't fall. Lander dribbles it out. He loses. Isaiah Crawford is fouled. Boy, a lot of contact down on this uh, possession, this end of the floor. Let's take a look at that. Loose ball all over the place. Newman does a good job trying to get to the goal. Just can't finish. And then we've got a lot of defensive activity by Louisiana Tech putting pressure on out there. And finally, Isaiah Crawford comes up with the foul. And, that, and that's Louisiana Tech's calling card. They are very proud of their defense. And you saw Sean Newman Jr. blew that play up. Yeah, it sure did. Chavez stepped out of bounds. Here's Christian Lander, who had been starting for Western Kentucky, had a concussion, has had a few injury bugaboos, but he's back in the lineup and they need him tonight. Yeah, after he came back from that concussion, he missed six games, but really has not found his groove back after that. Good yeah, rebound here by Louisiana Tech. There's Chavez. Easy to find Chavez with those shoes. John Newman Jr. Underneath, Mingum not able to capitalize. Boy, Western Kentucky, good defensive pressure. They're, they're really uh, attacking the basketball. We see this play here, nice deliver. And then I think it was Howard that got the hand on the ball. T. 
Egan Moore, they're really high on the Kentucky All-Star, the freshman. Attacking the other way, Allen poked away by Tegan Moore. I tell you what, I, I really like this uh, Newman point guard for Louisiana Tech. He, I mean, he keeps his eyes up, puts a lot of pressure on, dribbling the ball, waiting for uh, Western Kentucky to come over and double team him, and then he's able to slide a pass out. And he's the guy that Talvin Hester was most excited to get, even including Bacho. Chavez draws the foul. And that's Newman's first. Coach Lutz is uh, over there talking to, so kindly to one of the referees, expressing his displeasure with that foul call. I think he, I think he said, Mr. Mr. Referee, I kindly disagree. Exactly. That's how coaches normally very polite. Conduct their, their manners, yes. Chavez is an outstanding free throw shooter. Knocks them both down. He has five here, getting close to the under 12 timeout. Well, that's something if Louisiana Tech wants to get out of here with a win, they gotta knock down their foul shots. Right now they've been struggling in that department, but Chavez on the mark. Inside, and Columbe was fouled on the floor. So just the second foul of the game on Louisiana Tech. Western Kentucky ball when we come back. Welcome back, everybody. 20 to 16 our score. And looking at the stat sheet, both teams, even in the rebounding margin, they're used to having the advantage down low on the blocks, but right now it's a stalemate between the two squads. Yeah, and, and both of them uh, are really defending rebounding because uh, Louisiana Tech only has one offensive rebound. West Kentucky has two, has has one also. But uh, so they're doing a good job keeping each other off the backboards. Bacho, the leading rebounder in the conference, one board so far. But Sean Newman Jr. has had an excellent game. He's got three as the point guard. Tricky lob. And that's going to be off Christian Lander. Sure was. He was trying to dive to save it in, but uh, just couldn't get there. Christian Lander, the Indiana transfer from a couple years ago. Just nicked it. Here's Jordan Crawford. His high school nine miles away from the campus of Louisiana Tech. Finds Isaiah Crawford, no relation, into the corner. Isaiah. Jordan. Isaiah. Not enough touch, up, touch off the glass, and it'll go to the toppers. Western Kentucky defended that very well. You can see Isaiah Crawford, he was trying to get to his spot in the paint there, but Western did a good job of continuing to push him out a little bit further, and he never got in that comfort spot to take it off the backboard. They asked Steve Lutz how he was trying to, how he was planning to defend Isaiah Crawford. He said straight up. Colin Bay and Marshall. Now here's Tegan Moore. Lander unfurls a three and connects. I'm sure Coach Lutz would like that. We had mentioned that uh, Lander has not really found his groove after the injury, but uh, that was a good start for him. Chavez, it went right to him, but he was a little long. And every loose ball on that end of the floor seems to be going to the team in black. Yeah, a lot of hands on the ball, isn't it, you know? But as you're saying, it's going to the uh, Hilltoppers' favor so far on some of those loose ones. Into the game to the ball, though. Number four, John Newman. Don McHenry, what an interesting road he led to get here to Western Kentucky. And he's rewarded the Hilltoppers in kind. Now Colin Bay, a teammate of McHenry at Indian Hills Community College. Not able to get the bucket. Just a four shot. There's the dangerous Isaiah Crawford. 
with a screen from Bacho. Another Crawford. He had uh, 25 points in the first matchup with, between these two ball clubs, but then he's uh, really struggled. He was outstanding in that game. Yeah, very much so. Lander Woo. fouled by Jordan Crawford. Almost got a little clotheslined on that one. Yeah, that's the second on Crawford. Jordan Crawford taking a little cue from professional wrestling fan and fellow <laughs> Louisiana Tech alum Carl Malone on that time, dropping the elbow. Yeah, caught him up high. When Talvin Hester came, he, he brought a little extra intensity to the program, and Jordan Crawford, who was, had only been under Hester, wasn't sure, do I go with my, a lot of my friends left, should I stay? And his mom said, you're staying, we want you to be coached hard and loved on. And Talvin Hester said, that's why you have to have the moms on your side. Allen takes it baseline, the reverse, but it doesn't fall. First foul, though, on Bacho. Faye did a good job. Uh, Bacho was, was guarding Faye, and he kind of presented just a little bit of a, of a block out, so to speak, that allowed that opportunity for Allen to get to the basketball, or get to the goal. Allen, five points tonight so far. Made his 10th straight start tonight. See, that was Lutz. And Allen knocks them both down. You know, this really hasn't been a sloppy game at all. It's been a lot of a lot of hard hustle, some loose balls out there, but as far as turnover-wise, it's been pretty clean. Just five between the two teams. Tyler Henry into the game for the first time. Chavez hasn't really gotten going yet. Neither has Isaiah Crawford. That might change things. <laughs> That's what Crawford likes to do. Had a big show out there at the three-point line, and he likes to drive it, get into the lane. What a journey by Isaiah Crawford towards ACL in the same knee twice. He bounced back. Preseason player of the year, likely actual player of the year, too, as Bacho swats that one. Good help defense by Bacho. Here it is. He can't, leaves his, his, uh, leaves his man and comes over and defends a goal. Outstanding timing by Bacho. Lander gets a nice ovation. Inside, Babakar, Fah. Finds Newman. McHenry in the nick of time, but a little long. He rushed it. He had to rush it. Here's Chavez. A looper to Isaiah Crawford. They're looking for Bacho. And stingy defense by the Hilltoppers, second game in a row against him, at least so far. Get a mismatch on the inside here. Chavez trying to take Faye. And poked away by Henry to Sean Newman, who's fouled on the way down by Tyrone Marshall Jr. Correction, a foul was on Brandon Newman. He's coming from behind. You see the push out. Yeah, it looked like Newman it got, got him with a little push in the back. The block attempt was clean. I don't know if you could convince our referees in black and red and the bleachers of that, though. <laughs> Newman, 81%, was a JUCO state champion in California a year ago. That's a big deal over in California. The JUCO teams all get together. If you saw Last Chance U basketball, that was from that story. And he had seven assists in the state in the state championship game. Well, Newman does a good job. He, I mean, he's got some uh, he's got some speed out there. When he starts pushing the ball up the floor, he can uh, he can put some pressure on the defense. And he has three points. McHenry lost the ball there for a moment. Landers already made a three. The step back, a little short. Henry, catch and release three from the corner. Boy, nice high release by Henry there. 
We had mentioned that he didn't play in the first matchup against Western Kentucky. What a rebound there by Marshall, soaring in. But the extra hustle from Henry. What a strong few minutes by him. Well, a lot of contact out there from times. It's not getting called. They're letting him play. Newman got it. Six points for Sean Newman. Boy, Louisiana Tech is really concentrating on swinging the ball from side to side, uh, focusing on that three or, or, or the fake three and drive to the basket. And it's working for them. They're on an 8-0 run, and they've made their last three field goals. Fa. And there's a foul on the play. It was the first on Isaiah Crawford, the fifth on Louisiana Tech. Hilltoppers need to find something here. They're on a two-minute scoring drought, down eight. Louisiana Tech on a 8-0 run, Craig. Yeah, uh, they got some good looks here. Uh, they made their last three baskets, two of them from three-point range, and uh, here's one of the ones with Isaiah Crawford making a nice up and under the goal. And I believe that was Henry hitting that high archer. And then once again, Louisiana Tech doing a good job swinging the basketball, finding the open. Not only are they finding the open man, but they, uh, Western Kentucky hasn't really counted. They're 0 for their last five from the field. Well, Louisiana Tech's been, there was one by Henry, you know, just, they're just getting more aggressive defensively. Their hands are getting uh, after the ball a little bit more. We're able to get that one, one away from Dante Allen. Here's Newman. What a game he's had so far. Six points for the Los Angeles native, Isaiah Crawford. Here's Henry, the Southern Indiana transfer. That was his second stop of three. And Crawford knocks down the baseline, Jay. That's one of his favorites, being down on the baseline. John McHenry, there's the floater. Yeah, he was, he was able to get it up over the taller Bacho on the drive. Henry's been, uh, McHenry's been a little, little silent of late. He's got four points so far. We'll see if that gets him going. He loves that stroke, that little floater. Crawford backing down Lander, trying to draw the foul, and Ball has it. Just didn't seem like a good possession for Louisiana Tech. He kind of forced that one. They've been doing a good job of swinging the ball yeah. offensively. Rebound there by Crawford. He's also one of the better, along with scorers, he's one of the better rebounders in Conference USA. Chavez floats it up. And the rebound eventually is Allen's. Good offensive board by Bacho, but he just couldn't finish going back up. Western Kentucky, one for the last seven from the field. Here's McHenry, Bacho straight up. Newman, crafty, Bacho persistent, blocked by Allen and fouled by Babakar Fa. Boy, Bacho's size is really giving Fa some, some trouble inside. He's really attacking the offensive glass, having trouble finishing, but that time he was able to draw the foul and go to the line. Now sometimes, Craig, when you look at the big fellas, they might not have the best free throw shooting touch. Basta Bacho is 65%. He was three for three last game against New Mexico State. Yeah. See what he did on that first one. There he goes. Looked pretty good to me. Yeah, he did. 65%. He made it 100% of the time, all those. Number 23, Stephen and number 30, P.J. But uh, Bacho began his collegiate career at Arizona, didn't really play for them. Coaching change, went to Texas Tech. Coaching change, had to get a waiver 
to be a second time transfer, which is a rule that's gone kapoof over the last couple of weeks. But it was a big sigh of relief November 14th when they got Bacho. He missed the first two games because he wasn't eligible, although he'd been at Louisiana Tech all summer. And then he played his first game two days later, and he's been great ever since. Yeah, we mentioned that Bobakoff Hall for Western Kentucky was getting outmanned on the inside. As a result, Coach Lutz ended up bringing the stronger Howard into the game. That's how he does without Bacho on the floor. They go outside, and Moore misses the corner three. Isaiah Crawford blows by Moore and draws the foul. Nice scoop by Isaiah Crawford. We talked about, you know, he likes a mid-range jumper and also really likes to put a lot of pressure on the defender going to the basket. That time was able to use a good use of his right hand to come back. Crawford missed his first couple free throw attempts, knocks that one down. Western Kentucky now in the bonus. Jack Edelin, the Louisville native, into the game for the first time. Allen spots up a three. Got it. Boy, Western Kentucky really needed that uh, basket. Allen is the offense right now for Western Kentucky. He's got 10 of their 26. Henry chased off the line, lost the ball. Here comes Colin Bay, coast to coast, and chased by Moore. Good follow by Moore, not giving up on the drive by Colin Bay. Colin Bay just couldn't finish. Good defensive pressure by Western Kentucky to get that turnover. The crowd implores Western Kentucky on to our next break. Finally, some momentum for the toppers. Down eight. All right, heel topper fans. Lucky we're in the black today. He's got a little bit of momentum now. They got a defensive stop. Crowd here in Diddle was a little bit on their hands for a couple minutes there, but they were roaring back on this. And Allen three. And then on the other end, Callum Bay attacks and Moore finishes. And Western Kentucky finds themselves on a bit of a run with three minutes, 43 seconds to go in the first half, trying to take down the top team in Conference USA, Talvin Hester's Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. And Lutz, he really felt like Western Kentucky left an opportunity on the floor when they fell down to Mid Middle Tennessee State. They basically need to win out and get a little help if they want to get that top seed in the conference tournament down in Huntsville in a few weeks. Well, you have Sam Houston State as the other one that's uh, right there with the Louisiana Tech on top of the leaderboard. And they've, they've took it to Western Kentucky as Allen takes it to the rack. Boy, Allen didn't want to be denied on that one. He's got a dozen. Newman blows by Edlin. And Callum Bay just closed out on Crawford. Again, Western Kentucky, they're trying to take Crawford on with just one man. They're just going to try to isolate on him. Chavez, got it! Boy, you could just see Chavez lining that one up over their shorter, Edlin. It's a nine-point ball game. Moore is fouled underneath. And you can take your pick. I think it's going to be Mangum. See the good drive by the base to the baseline and getting drawn the contact. That's one thing. Uh, he's a Tiga Moore freshman player for Western Kentucky, and he's at his best when he's driving to the basket. He's uh, had a couple good games. A uh, few games ago, had 16, had a career high. 16 against the uh, University of Texas El Paso. That's uh, just a nice young player. He also led the way for Western Kentucky against New Mexico State, their most recent win with 12 points. 
There's Bacho back in the game. And Moore, not a, he's used to scoring. He had about 4 million points in high school at Owen know. County. He had 4,000. I'm just slightly exaggerating. <laughs> Bachos had to earn it every inch of the way tonight. Isaiah Crawford draws the foul on Column Bay. Kind of got turned around in air. Boy, Isaiah Crawford, he just uses his size, you know, to put a lot of pressure on the defense. He wants to get to his spot, go into the rim. You know, we asked Talvin Hester, the head coach for Louisiana Tech, how he approached being the preseason conference player of the year. And he said he's enormous, he's a very shy guy. He, he just seemed happy that people noticed him. He wasn't too big, he was just happy. Oh, I'm glad they paid attention to me. <laughs> well, you know, if you think about it, uh, Conference USA had a lot of change this year. Uh, new teams coming in, uh, coaches, new coaches coming in. So there wasn't a whole lot of who's who in the league and the voters being the coaches and the uh, Sports information directors, they didn't know who to vote for. So it was good that he was noticed. <laughs> and he lived up to it so far as Moore gets a fifth point of the contest. Long pass. Good switch Crawford. out by Howard. Bacho underneath. Crawford run through by the smaller Edlin. Boy, that was just a good look by Bacho. He he drew the double team, and uh, then Crawford found the open spot on the interior of the, of the lane. You know, for first year playing together, Bacho and Isaiah Crawford, they've got a good synergy going. They sure do. Crawford tonight from the line now, three for six, as Don McHenry comes back into the game. If you're looking for someone not named Isaiah Crawford to be player of the year, McHenry is one of the guys who's going to get a couple of peaks. That's 10 for Isaiah Crawford. Of course, uh, Crawford, you know, he got in a lot of foul trouble in that first matchup. Uh, really, and, and ended up fouling out, so he was not that productive in the first matchup. He's really showing his talents tonight. From the corner. Airmail there by Tyrone Marshall. Yeah, both. Not only did Chavez not play, and Crawford, as you point out, Isaiah Crawford fouled out. Bacho fouled out in that game, too. Here's Newman. Knocks down the three. Sean Newman, Jr., a 27% three-point shooter, has knocked down a couple. He, he's kind of feeling it. You can see after he makes a shot, he's, uh, he's really showing some emotion out there. An 11-point game. Howard sandwiched. Triple team. McHenry, catch and release, got it! West Kentucky did a good job after the triple down there, finding Marshall, and then he was able to kick it to the corner. So, you know, good, good rotation offensively for West Kentucky. Now, the Bulldogs can't really hold for the last shot as Newman attacks. Took on Allen and scored. What a first half by Sean Newman, Jr. He has 11. Ten-point game, just under 25 seconds to go. And Talvin Hester, he had to accumulate this team. They only had five players come back from last year's team. And like so many teams nowadays, they really tapped the transfer portal. They, they went down the junior college level, and he hit gold on almost everyone. Oh, yes. I mean, uh, you know, as you said, Jonathan, you see it across the scope of college basketball. I mean, you look at these players, and you see that how many of them have been at another school and transferred, and that's just part of today's environment. But, you know, hopefully we'll get to that point where that where that extra three years is, is, I think, going to burn out here another year where they, they won't have that extra time. But they'll still have the portal will always be there. But also, Louisiana Tech, to further that point, they have two true sophomores on their roster. No freshmen. Two true sophomores. But they have a very experienced team 
that is a, a new team. They didn't play together. Here's a coincidence fact. New Mexico State is who uh, Louisiana Tech just played. 14 brand new players, not one returning starter for that ball club either. So, And they find themselves in seventh, Louisiana Tech on top, so it's a mixed bag. One-on-one -on -one duel, McHenry, Chavez. The double comes up. They're still doubling. Newman got it! Boy, Newman, Newman started out this game very productive, and then he went silent, but that was a good finish for uh, Newman. Both Brandon Newman and Dante Allen, they've been up and down, but they've both been strong so far. 22 points between them as Chavez hits it on one end. Tegan Moore strong to the bucket. It's a seven-point game on the final home game of the year in Diddle. Western Kentucky gets a big bucket right at the end. Welcome back and ready for the second half seven point ball game between Louisiana Tech and Western Kentucky. We said in the last segment that these two teams shot great from the field. Well, if you watch these highlights, you're gonna think they didn't miss. And Sean Newman barely did. Yeah, we saw Newman with the drive there and then he gets a kick out from uh, Crawford for the three. Makes a couple of these, went two for three in the first half, 11 points which was unusual for him because normally he's the guy that wants to distribute it. And then he was able to get all the way to the rim and finish pretty strong. Newman averages 6.9 points per game. As Isaiah Crawford, he really kicked it on in that first half, finished with 10 points in the first segment of the game. Kind of showing a little diversity of his talents then on the other end of the floor, what a first half by Dante Allen. Steps up. This is unusual for him on the drive, but uh, he had a couple of these here in the first half, was able to finish with the contact. Allen finished with a Western Kentucky high 12 points in that first half. And Brandon Newman countered with 10 for himself. 10 points for number 10. This was part of his uh, early buckets that he had. We mentioned that he was uh, kind of disappeared there a little bit, but was able to finish strong in the first half with the, making that last one down. And right this, here before half. That was a good way to go out to the break for Western Kentucky. Uh, trimmed it to seven. And now we're about to get rocking. What do you, what do you want to see out of the Hilltoppers going into the second half as we look at our standings. There's the stakes right there. Louisiana Tech's right on top. Sam Houston right on their heels, dead even in the conference standings. Western Kentucky, if they want to win the conference regular season, they have to win tonight. And what do they need to do to do that? Well, I think they need, they need, they need not to have the scoring droughts. That's been one of their uh, hindrances, it seems like, at various times throughout this year. So they hit that one small scoring drought uh, they, they just need to continue to put pressure offensively, need to toughen up a little defensively and keep getting those 50-50 balls if they want to get out here with a victory tonight. It's been a little tough for the Hilltoppers to string together 40 solid minutes, and they got most of 20 in that first half. They need a big 20 here on the back nine. You know, you showed Sam Houston up there right with uh, Louisiana Tech, and, of course, uh, Louisiana Tech and Sam Houston play this coming up uh, the next time out. So uh, that's going to be another big game to determine first place in Conference USA. Yeah, that's on Thursday. Attacking the basket, swatted away by Bacho. Well, we mentioned that Bacho was one of the best uh, shot blockers in the country. Came off the ball and whacked that one up into the sands. On the way and knocking down the three, Tyrone Marshall Jr. Boy, Marshall has been one that has struggled. He's only scored 12 points in his last four games and playing 22 minutes, but uh, his production really dipped. So starting in the second half and coming back with a with a basket, and a good steal. for him. And a steal too. He was one for his last 10 from three before that last bucket. He attacks Bacho and he's fouled by Bacho. 
I think Bacho wasn't thinking that he fouled him. He had his hands uh, straight up as he came over to help defend again, but just caught him a little bit on the arm. That sends Tyrone Marshall to the line, the Nashville native. They really love his length, especially guarding Isaiah Crawford. They said some, he'll have some plays defensively. We're just wondering where he came from. He's so explosive, so athletic, but sometimes he can get a little stuck in the half court, and he left a free throw at the line. Now Sean Newman, one of his best halves of the season was just played. Re, no Tough good. Shot. Tough shot. Marshall feeling it. And you can feel the crowd almost trying to will that ball in, but it fell away. Three-point ball game here early second. Bacho inside and the bucket and the foul. Newman, great job drawing the double team out there and Bacho with a nice slip. Gets in front of the basket and finishes. He's a handful inside. Yeah, he's, he's tough. Native of Paris, France. Interesting show, sojourn uh, uh, across the south when he came to America, starting in Arizona, then Texas Tech, now in Louisiana Tech. Says he likes it in Ruston, Louisiana. Doesn't really, they leave him alone, he's shy. McHenry attacking the bucket, Bacho the rebound. Coach Chauvin trying to get his uh, squad set over there. A little bit more deliberate on this end, this possession. This is the pace, Louisiana Tech likes it in the half court. It's gonna stay with the Bulldogs. Bacho keeping it alive, keeping it tapped around there. Finally going off of a hilltopper. That was a long time for the inbound. Steve Lutz was about to beg him for the five second call. Newman. Isaiah Crawford from straight away. Missed off the heel. Newman, crafty, Bacho, can't put it down. Boy, a lot of contact up there. Two Hilltoppers help each other up on the back end of the floor. Now Brandon Newman. Great first half by him, 10 points. Allen had a dozen. Just not a good shot by Allen. He was drifting to his left off balance. Great hustle there by Babakar. Fa inside, draws a foul. And that is on Sean Newman Jr., his second. Nice dish by Newman here. Once again, we've seen a couple slips by the big men on both ends of the floor. Bacho on one end, and that time Fa was able to slip in there and draw the foul. Spa scoreless in the first half. 68% free throw shooter. A little bit of a tweener in position size between a center and power forward. And he's drawn a very tough assignment against Bacho. He's, he's at his best, it seems like, uh, this year is when he's going against, a, you know, obviously another center that doesn't have the size of Bacho. He went against uh, the one at uh, New Mexico State, very uh, Igazibi uh, out there, and uh, he struggled in those two games. Chavez, he's looking for Bacho. Works around Newman, who almost was able to swat it. And a strong rebound by Allen inside. Good job by Allen getting the 50-50 ball that time. Allen. There's an open man and an airmail pass by Allen, just not able to connect with Tyrone Marshall. 
right idea, just an errant pass. As you said, I think Coach Lutz is kind of giving them a little earful over there, thinking that there might have been some body contact and uh, Bacho might have bumped them a hair. But, you know, they've, lot, they've let a lot of contact go through in this game so far. So uh, if, they, if, they, if they started out that way, just let it keep on rolling out. Yeah, there'd be a there'd be a lot more guys in foul trouble to, at this point if it was otherwise. Howard in to take on Bacho into the corner. Chavez from the corner pocket. Well, Newman from Western Kentucky was trying to lay off and help on the drive, and you don't have to give Chavez too much of a daylight window for him to get that three off. What sticky fingers by Isaiah Crawford to a flashing Newman. 13 for Sean Newman Jr. And defense to offense in a hurry. It's a 10 point ball game. And there's the foul and that's on Bacho. That's number three. Howard was trying to post up right there in the middle of the lane and Newman was doing a good job of keeping his heads up head up and trying to find the big guy hard to catch the ball when you got one arm being pulled down makes it difficult <laughs> yeah. some of us can pull that off I don't know who but but some yeah Don McHenry will trigger with seven points so far tonight. And an offensive foul on Marshall. That's number three. Ten point game. Louisiana Tech's grown it. Can they keep it? Western Kentucky needs to pick it up defensively a little bit. Well, they say defense travels, and for the Bulldogs, the second half, it's made the trip from Louisiana here to Diddle Arena, and they have been stingy. Yeah, just a good steal by Isaiah Crawford, you know, is didn't have much to do, but Newman did another great job of finishing at the other end. Offensively, Western Kentucky just one for five from the field. Yeah, that last series was turning defense into offense, you know, for Louisiana Tech. That's when they've been at their best. Boy, they really have the four spread, don't they? They do. They don't have Bacho on the floor. They're relying on Will Allen, the 6'7 player, to play the post inside. As Isaiah Crawford. Flings it to the bench. Hard to make those good pass decisions when you jump up in the air and have no place else to go. Toppers will need a lot more of those turnovers if they're going to get back in this game. They haven't generated that many. Here's a bucket by Moore. He has seven. He's had over 10 points or more in two of the last three games, and Tegan Moore, the freshman from Kentucky, well on his way. Here's Newman, and a foul on the floor by Don McHenry, the first foul on the Milwaukee native. Mentioned about the quickness by Newman here for Law Tech, was able to just get a step by McHenry. Looks like they called it on the flat on the floor too. Yeah, two very accomplished junior college players going against each other. McHenry All-American. Chavez couldn't get the bucket. And here is McHenry. A three. Got it. Three. Three up and three down by Don McHenry, and it's a five-point game. Well, you saw him take his patience that time. You know, he just gathered himself, was able to knock it down. Underneath, 
It clears out, but missing Allen. Moore through the lane is fouled by Isaiah Crawford. You know, that particular possession, Dante Allen did a good job of moving himself ahead into the corner, and that helped open up the middle for that drive by Moore. Crawford, Isaiah Crawford didn't know which player to take defensively. It's those little things, those winning plays. Moving off ball, down low. Here's McHenry, the double team shown. 10 to shoot for Western Kentucky. Tegan Moore left it short. Here's Chavez running away with it. Sliding through. Rebound there by Henry. Newman got it. 15, tying his uh, season high and D1 high for Sean Newman Jr. Boy, they continue to battle on the inside. Loose ball, they're all after it. Brandon Newman misses the three, trying to draw the foul on the play. Here's another scrum. And numbers for Louisiana Tech. Isaiah Crawford took it to the rim. Brandon Newman had the foul called against him. Boy, once when he cleared by Rodney Howard out there, he kind of put it in a, shifted it in a different gear, taking it to the basket. He's just so dangerous, Craig, in the open floor. Yes. For his size, he handles the ball very well. He's got that long wings, wingspan, seven feet, one inches long. Yeah, he's a pterodactyl out there. He's got an over eight feet tall standing reach. And he has a dozen points. I'd like to be his tailor, you know, I can make some extra money for that. <laughs> you have to spend a lot on extra fabric. <laughs> That's right. And a foul down low on Will Allen, the redshirt sophomore. One of a trio of Louisiana natives playing for La Tech. Lander from the corner, hits one. Two threes in the game for Christian Lander. So a good kick out to find Lander in the corner. Skip pass, Isaiah Crawford. He was closed out on by Moore. And a whistle on the floor, and that is the second foul on Tegan Moore. Pressure, pressure, pressure is what Isaiah Crawford does. You can't leave him open either. One lapse and he's going to knock it down, and he's going to play the whole game. Here's Henry from the corner, hits a three in front of his bench. Six points for Tyler Henry. Yeah, he nailed one in the first half. Here's Enoch Colombe. Newman. Boy, fight inside. Just a lot of arms going back and forth, and the referees finally decided they wanted to clean that up between Howard and Allen inside. And that's the second. Here we go. Take, yeah, take a look at this in here. Second foul on Allen, and they're just trying to buy time for Bacho, who's sitting on the bench with three fouls at the moment. And are they looking for a hook and hold here? You know, the classic hook and cold. I'm sure you had that a lot when you were playing here back in the late 70s, early 80s. I used to kind of clutch him down with the off chicken wing, you know, and <laughs> when that defender would stick his arm out trying to defend, I just kind of, now you can't do that, you know. And but, it, it, n but nowadays, but, it's a flagrant foul. Back then, that was a skill. It, it was, you know, if, they, if you can get away with it, it just kind of gave you one extra advantage on the inside. Now, when you were playing, 
So look towards the top of your screen, upper left. That's what they're looking for. Did he hook and hold him? And there's a lot of arm grappling. Uh, no, I, I think they looked at it, but I don't think there was anything there. Or did they? No, they were just, I think they were just letting the players get reset again. I think they Steve, thought it was just a just an aggressive play, not a hook and hold in there. Veteran coaching move by the first year Western Kentucky coach. Steve Lutz using this as a timeout to draw up a play. You gotta take all those when you can. Yep. You know, we got a veteran uh, referee crew here here tonight. As you get later into February, that that counter start turning into March. Yeah. They kind of let a little bit more contact go, don't they, Jonathan? They do. It's uh, the intensity's up. Big game for both teams as uh, it looks like we will have a timeout on the floor. But Louisiana Tech, they're, they're getting everything they could want from Sam Houston in the conference race. Sam Houston keeping pace with them. Oh, that's what they're that's what they're working on. We got a shot clock issue. Got 22 on one end and 25 at the other. Uh, I think they're that? trying to get it back to 27. So, Well, folks, so the situation is that the shot clocks are not speaking with each other. They had an argument, and they're just not on the same page. <laughs> so one shot clock says 22 seconds. The other one says 25. Right now, it says some version of 23. Now it's 36, but the six is backwards. It is just, it's calamity in here right now, Craig. Well, you know, they've, th these two uh, squads have put up a lot of points, and maybe, they, maybe that clock just got worn yeah, out. There it is. So that is not an actual number in any form. That's a, something going on. While we have a moment, though, we were talking before the game. It's sort of 30 right now. You were, you were here with Gene Cady, right? I was, yes. What was it like under Coach Katie, who, who went on to great acclaim with Purdue in the 80s and 90s? Exactly. I, I was, uh, that's, one of the, that's the only reason I came to West Kentucky was uh, Gene Katie had just gotten the job. He was an assistant coach at Arkansas and got named coach here. He was here for two years before that opened up for him to go to Purdue. Uh, you talk about intense coach. A <laughs> uh, lot of respect for him, though. Uh, he made me a better player. Uh, worked me hard, but uh, that's what I wanted, and and uh, helped my career. Do you have a what's what's the kind of quintessential Gene Cady story from your time with him? You know that you can share. Well, he came up with this saying on the back of your uh, your playing trunks as play hard, and that was how he wanted you to play. You know, and and. Uh, that was before long shorts and everything like yeah. that. So here are, these, here are these little short shorts we're all with play hard on the back. But that was kind of his his motto and kind of what he stood for. Well, I'll tell you what we're still standing around for is the shot clock is still not totally cooperating. There it is. So you can decipher that. That is two something. That could be multiple. That could be multiple numerals right now. That. It could be a three, it could be a five, it could be an eight. Oh, now it's nothing. We've got nothing there. It's just it's just all sorts of stuff. You said we had a veteran crew, and this is a problem I'm sure they are well-versed ready for. Yeah, I wonder if they'll just give it a little bit more time to see if it can get uh, re-synced, so to speak, or do they turn them both off on each end so so neither... Keep it on the floor? Uh-huh. Oh, well, but I, I don't know if they have that, but, you know... It's unfortunate that we have this long of a break for for the game that we've seen so far at the pace that we've seen. And we've got uh, quite a few points. The, there might be a, a, this number 148 might have some ring to it uh, for some of our viewers. So you can see we're tracking, we're on track for it. Uh, but high scoring, Louisiana Tech, it, it feels like Western Kentucky, they get it to about five. You can feel the temperature in this dome thickening, and then Louisiana Tech has an answer for it. Yeah, and a lot of that answer has been uh, Isaiah Crawford and uh, Newman. That's uh, been after it. Western Kentucky started this half as uh, only one for five shooting from from the field, but then they made three other last five, but still trailed by nine. 
we're kind of getting an explanation by one of the referees over here now. All right, Jonathan, I can report. Jonathan will get it, get to the report. So what they're going to do is they're going to turn off the shot clocks. They'll turn them back on when they're fixed, but they're going to keep them off. And then the PA announcer is going to really make his money tonight because he's going to keep the time and he's going to give a signal of 10 seconds and count then down. five, and then like our production oh. truck, which does such a great job, they're gonna then count down from five to one. Oh, so and they're not making them count every second off. He's huh? gonna count them all off. Okay. Well, that's what I thought that they would probably do at some point, that you just gotta get back to playing ball and turn them off. I'm telling you, this is a veteran crew, right? They, yep. they had that thing. They are ready for it. Now, what they're mercifully not gonna make the PA guy do is count down all the milliseconds that you get <laughs> in the shot clocks now. So we won't have to do that part. Well, we don't have the uh, we don't have the point seconds here in college basketball as as they do in the pros. So mercifully, so so they'll turn the shot clocks off. That's what our ref head referee is explaining to our two coaches. It, uh, just uh, going back in time a little bit. What is timeless though? Western Kentucky and Louisiana Tech, it always seems like they play close games. They have been playing each other on and off since 1928. That's a long time. Long time. Well, they were they had some uh, great games. Of course, uh, Louisiana Tech had just uh, departed from the Western Athletic Conference after many years there. But prior to that, they were in the uh, Sunbelt Conference. Western was a member there for almost 30 years, or right at 30 years, I believe. And so, you know, they've, they've had plenty of battles over the years. Here's Lander, three ball corner, pocket! Lander, second one out of that corner. A lot of pressure on him. And here's that threshold, uh, two possession game. Can Western Kentucky get a defensive stop? Chavez, money. He had just enough room where Marshall backed up and Chavez took advantage of it. Tegan Moore rims out from the corner. And a strong rebound by Will Allen. You think Western Kentucky was told that there's a 10 second clock now? <laughs> they, put, they put these last two shots up pretty quick. Uh, they're not gonna wait, four. not gonna wait time. Henry, not afraid to shoot, drives, and fouled by Howard, and go into the line for a bonus will be Tyler Henry. Boy, Henry, strong drive to the basket. Was able to absorb the contact when Howard came over defensively trying to block the shot. And awkward shot, but it, hey, when they go in, they count, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he has started the last three games, came off the bench tonight. Missed a handful of games, including the last outing against Western Kentucky. Right now, Louisiana Tech, four for the last four from the field. Moore going to the line, and the foul is on Newman. The foul is on number four. Western Kentucky in the bonus. And Tegan Moore hits about three quarters of his free throw attempts. We had mentioned that uh, Bacho picked up his third foul early in this uh, second half, but Coach looks like he made the decision to bring him back in. It looked like Western Kentucky got on a bit of a run, and it was time for Bacho. No more. That didn't fall. It's a 10-point game. 11 minutes to go. Still no shot clocks. We haven't really tested our PA announcer yet. He'll be counting down at 10 and 5. Chavez builds up ahead of steam. It's kicked over to Henry. He doesn't need much room, Chavez. Down and out, and here's Moore. 
that was the first time we heard a countdown. I heard three and four in the background, or four, three. Lander couldn't hit his four, three. And an offensive foul on Isaiah Crawford, his third. You know, he does have a tendency at times of getting himself into foul trouble just because he's so aggressive offensively. But Moore doing a good job stepping in, helping out. Had Allen with the block on the backside. And there's a foul on the floor against Western Kentucky, a hold on Talik Chavez. That's his first. And Louisiana Tech is racking him up here. That's team foul number nine. Moore was one and uh, for two his last time to the line. I tell you, Tegan Moore, who was a Kentucky All Star as a junior and a senior, has really come on strong late in the season. Started getting some playing time when Christian Lander was banged up. And he played well enough to keep it. Now we have a little bit more action by our referee crew. And they're going back and looking at the call on the floor was it'd be one of the bow one and one is what he's doing. So it should be that one. So the official review. Look, there's the uh, there's the best view. Those those folks right behind, they're able to listen in. <laughs> yeah. See everything going on. They're watching the monitor. And there you see the referees in the little scroll ball thing. That's how you can scroll back in videos, rewind, fast forward, really easily. They use those back in production trucks. Some places they kind of have that blackout screen, so the people behind can't actually see what's going on on these replays. So looking, they are looking at that last foul. Right now, nine-point ball game. Here is that last foul. Oh, there's the could be that hook and hold again, and that could be a flagrant that wasn't called initially. And this is what Craig McCormick's specialty was back in the day. <laughs> But this one was actually a little bit more of more. the hold, you know. It actually looked it. Uh, they tried. They looked. They looked at one earlier in this game. Uh, that was just. I think it was Howard and uh, somebody else were uh, battling inside for it. But this one had a little bit more of the hold feature. So that would be the the free throw. Then the ball stays with Western Kentucky, which would be best case scenario for the Hilltoppers because they've got to be able to string a few baskets together here if they're going to keep themselves or give themselves a chance to get it, get back into this game. Because you've mentioned it a couple times here, Jonathan, that, you know, they kind of get to that six point mark where they're behind by six and then Louisiana Tech runs off a couple more baskets and they can never breach uh, that six point mark. And you can feel just Diddle is on the threshold of just wanting to really erupt They've been engaged so far this game. Uh, We're they, about they, to get work. They did a promotion. They did a promotion uh, for this last home regular season game. Uh, they did a blackout. They also uh, offer the students free T-shirts. They would give them free vouchers, probably for some pizza. But uh, anyhow, so they tried to get their, it was probably their largest crowd of the year. So the word, it has been upgraded to a hook and hold, which is the flagrant one foul on Chavez. So it'll be more shooting the second free throw than Western Kentucky ball. So that's uh, the third 10 point or more game for Tegan Moore out of the last four contests. And now it's Western Kentucky basketball down eight. They've been threatening at times the second half. Lander thought about it. He had been two from that corner here in the last five minutes. They're looking for Howard. 
Moore's had the hot hand. Here's Howard on Bacho. And he stepped on the line. Howard was trying to use that drop step again, going to his left hand, but boy, he ran into a brick wall with Bacho holding his position strong. They, don't, they have the stat for blocks, but they don't really have it for just shots altered, and you can see Howard had to rethink that a few times, and they got all flummoxed. Inside, 10 to play. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Five, Henry. Oh, he got the roll too. That's 10 points for Tyler Henry, who averages 5.4. Good patience by Henry that time with good pump fake. Was able to play through the contact and get the shot off. Friendly roll. Soft rims there. Now you look at, for Louisiana Tech, you come in, the, the headliners, Daniel Bacho, Isaiah Crawford, but you've got huge contributions from Tyler Henry, huge from Sean Newman Jr. Henry has 11. He was scoreless in two of his last three games. Haphazard possession by Western Kentucky. Lander with the left. The Bulldogs have had an answer every time Western Kentucky struck here in the second half. This time the answer is the big Frenchman, Daniel Bacho. Oh, I just muscled in Howard on that one. Good finish by Bacho. Marshall Jr. not able to get it. Tegan caught more. What a bit of acrobatic use of the left hand. There was a bunch of just hand checking there between Lander and Newman, and Christian Lander got caught with his hands in the cookie jar there. It's the eighth on the toppers. And Sean Newman going to the line with a one and one. And calmly, 16 for Newman, a new career high. And we asked Ta or Talvin Hester if it took him a while to get used to the D1 game. He said, not really. He just had to get, he didn't have to up his game or speed up. He just had to get, he had to learn the level, the different intricacies of it. And he's figured it out. Well, he shot those two free throws uh, just bottom of the net on both. Loose ball tie up coming up, nope. Louisiana Tech able to grab it. And Chavez was leaking out ahead. Sean Newman Jr. level headed his team up 11. There's another one of those 50-50 balls. If Western Kentucky wants a chance, they've got to start coming up with those. But, you know, Louisiana Tech, they're flexing their muscle. The number nine scoring defense in the country. They get a lot of turnovers too. And Tegan Moore draws the foul. He'll be shooting free throws when we come back after the foul on Drayvon Mangum. Tenth on Louisiana Tech. 11-point lead, though, for the Bulldogs. The band is rocking diddle, and Louisiana Tech is rocking the floor defensively. They lead by 11. So far, they're keeping the Hilltoppers at bay especially on scrambles like this. Well, this is, where, I mean, this has just kind of been a trademark of what they do is a lot of uh, pushing and shoving and grabbing, and there's Isaiah Crawford comes out of it. But they sure are active with their hands. Yeah, one of the best defenses in the country any way you slice it. 
And here's Tegan Moore with a couple free throws. Keyword a couple free, th free throws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A couple players didn't get the memo on that one. Isaiah Crawford, he was just playing, he and Newman were playing hard no matter what. Yep. That's 13 for Moore. Eight of them here in the second half. He's really helped Western Kentucky stay afloat. They're down 10, though. Mingum swatted by Fa. And there's a whistle down low. I think a little frustration there from Drayvon Mangum. Boy, Fall come over and tried to block it and did a good job of hustling and getting on the back and keeping the ball in his hands. Getting rewarded for the foul, getting a couple foul shots out of it. And those are the effort plays that West Kentucky is going to have to have more of. Babakar Fa has been shooting the free throws pretty well of late. He's one for two today, but he had made 11 in a row But before that. Looks pretty good up at the line, doesn't he? Yeah, he's looking pretty accomplished yeah. out there. Mm -hmm. That's where all his points have come from. He's got two, the native of Senegal. Yeah, kind of have an off night scoring wise for Western Kentucky. He's been battling defensively, though, as a soaring rebound by Newman, who's a really good rebounder for a point guard. That's six boards now for Newman. Well, that's impressive, you know, out of that position. Fa back into position, but Bacho's a load. He misses the hook, and the rebound's Christian Landers. <laughs> Bumped right into Tegan Moore. Now Don McHenry. They really need him to get going. Well, New Newman's quickness, I think, is bothering McHenry. Just can't turn the corner on him. Fa swatted at it, squirts out to Lander. Ten seconds on the Five, shot clock. Four, McHenry, three. pow! Boy, that lifted the crowd up here. That's what they've been waiting for. Timeout, Louisiana Tech. A strike from Don McHenry. He has 13. Western Kentucky on the comeback trail. Back inside Diddle Arena, and we got ourselves a ball game. Just a six-point margin on the strength of this thunderclap from Don McHenry. Yeah, shot clock was winding down. Of course, we still don't have shot clocks in here yet, but he was able to pull back and knock that one down. The Hilltopper defense needs to get a stop. They get one. Baba Carfa bobbles it. Here's Newman Jr. That was going to be a tough catch for Fa. Crawford attacking the basket. Boy, finished strong with the left hand. Uh-oh, a little contact down here. I think Isaiah Crawford thought that he might have got some extra contact because he stayed on the floor there for a moment. Yeah, so it's a delay a game on Crawford. That's just a warning at this point. But I think you're right. I think he thought there would be a whistle there, and there wasn't. It is an eight-point ball game, though. Morris fouled on the way up. 
And it's on Tyler Henry who pleads his case, but the Brooklyn, New York native's not going to be heard. Uh, no. <laughs> you know, here's Tegan Moore, the most aggressive hilltopper here in the second half. He's put a lot of pressure offensively on Louisiana Tech's defense and been able to get rewarded at the line. 14 for Moore. He's now seven for nine from the free throw line. And you can add, he is 15. There's that magic six mark again. Lander the run out. Lander. 13 for Christian Lander. And it's a four point ball game. It's been Lander's best game since he's come back from that concussion. And a turnover. Brandon Newman through a crowd. Lander's was tracking and then just got saw by Tyler Henry or he had a walk up three. McHenry, it rims out and into the arms of Sean Newman Jr. This place would have exploded again, wouldn't it? It would have. Newman Jr. Chavez, the runner, that kicks out. The strong rebound by Brandon Newman. He excels at that part of his game. Lander on the attack, going downhill, draws the foul. It's been a while since I've seen uh, Christian Lander this aggressive driving it to the basket offensively. And right now he's holding it. It looks like his shoulder pectoral area. He got shook, shaken up a little bit in practice on Monday. But the senior from Evansville, great run at Wright's High School there, then went to IU. But uh, West Kentucky only shot five free throws in the first half. and. They've turned it around here in the second half. How many have they shot now, Jonathan? That's a miss from Lander. We are looking. They've shot 14 in the second half. Yeah. Now 15. They got Louisiana Tech in the double bonus pretty early in this half. Gave them the, some extra opportunities at the line. 14 for Christian Lander. Sight for sore eyes for the folks from Bowling Green. And he's getting a big ovation. Coach Hester has something that he's kind of discussing with one of the referees. He's pretty upset over there on his bench. You wonder, is this Crawford, is this Chavez? Do they go to Bacho? They go to Chavez, but he bobbled it. Boy, he would have had a wide open layup had he been able to catch that. It was a nice little soft pass by Bacho to the cutting Chavez, but it was just outside of his reach. Now here's Don McHenry, who's got 13 points. He had been in the 20s for four games in a row before recently. The freshman, Tegan Moore, inside, fouled again. That's the fourth on Sean Newman Jr. The atmosphere meets the occasion. A one possession game down the stretch. It's a three point ball game. And this near capacity crowd in Diddle has got quite a bit to cheer about at the moment. Yeah, I mentioned that uh, Coach Hester for Louisiana Tech, he was upset over there. Could be one of the reasons is his ball club haven't shot, hasn't shot a free throw in, in quite a while while Western's gone to the line numerous times. And they're on a two minute long scoring drought. And at the free throw line, as he's been for most of this half, Tegan Moore, who has been outstanding in the second half, the freshman growing up before everyone's eyes, this will be his ninth free throw attempt of the second half. Four, 
That ties his career high. That sets his career high, and it's a one-point game. I think this, uh, this home crowd has definitely helped this Western Kentucky team pick it up defensively. Just the energy in here. Crawford does exactly what he loves down the lane. He has 16. Kind of a cool cat there, isn't he? <laughs> He's so calm. <laughs> Moore, crafty. 19 for Tegan Moore. 14 of them here in the second half. Tegan Moore continues to grow up in front of our eyes. Oh, and a foul that time on Tyrone Marshall Jr. That is his fourth foul. It is the ninth on Western Kentucky. Here's the replay. I so, guess they called Marshall with the bump. I think so. It was, because think it was Keegan Moore actually, actually, Keegan Moore actually had more reach in. You could have made the argument it could have been on Keegan. And there's the calm customer, Isaiah Crawford, the front runner for Conference USA Player of the Year. He could also be the Defensive Player of the Year too. And that lead is restructured to three. 18 points for Isaiah Crawford. Three minutes to go. Tegan Moore taking on Bacho. The putback by Howard is tipped out. And it will stay with Western Kentucky. They might look at it. They will not. Oh, so there's 20 seconds on the shot clock. 20, 20 on the shot, yep. Here's the replay of it. Question is if Lander touched it and the ruling on the floor was he did not. If Bacho knocked it out, knocked it away. Chavez, who's really upped his game defensively, guarding the best player for Western Kentucky, Don McHenry. Moore takes on Isaiah Crawford. Geez, what a nice up and under. He was able to use his body to shelter Crawford away from trying to block it. He has 21, Craig. Impressive. And a whistle down low on Rodney Howard. Two seventeen to go. And to the line, Daniel Bacho. You know, we've seen a we've seen a lot more knock around on the inside between Howard and Bacho and throughout this game. That wasn't near of what we've seen the level of earlier in the earlier in this game. The intensity just keeps ramping up. So make it a three-point game. Thirteen points for Daniel Bacho. They're looking for Lander. What a second half he's had. Tegan Moore lost the ball. Sean Newman Jr. to Bacho! What a finish by Bacho. Newman was eyeing him up on the trail all the way down the floor. Bacho ran it hard. Margin back up to five. Minute 40 to go. Newman step back three. Pow! Time. 
What a big bucket by Brandon Newman. It's back to two. He'd been quiet this whole second half, Greg. He sure has, but you know, he must have felt it on this one because he had that little fade away from top of the key and just nailed it. Newman who's been a little up and down, the Valparaiso native, spent most of his collegiate career at Purdue. He was a little hot and cold there. Here's the exchange though. Bacho on one end. Brandon Newman waves him off on the other. Corey, it's, going back to that Bacho, you know, thunder dunk that he had. It was all set up by Newman. I could just see Newman's eyes. He, he was, John Newman. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's two Newmans. Yeah, 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 John Newman. But uh, when he was coming down the floor, he was just, he had that, had that one eye looking backwards almost and uh, just looking for his big guy. Yeah, what a setup there by Sean Newman and then Brandon Newman on the other end of the floor. Marshall's got to be careful there. He's playing with four fouls. Once again, we, we don't, the shot clocks are turned off. So, you know, late in a game like that, that could be a difference too. Sean Newman Jr., the handoff, and Crawford. Louisiana Tech begging for a foul. They don't get it. Tegan Moore the other end, blocked by Bacho. What an exchange of plays on both ends. And a timeout by Louisiana Tech with a minute six to go. What a turn of events there. The altered shot on the Louisiana Tech offensive end and then the big block by Bacho, his yeah, third you, of the game. Yeah, you had Crawford. Uh, we're going back to the Bacho block here first, but uh, boy, he timed that one up. I said third of the game. That was his fourth of the game and none more dramatic than that. I think it's interesting, Craig, down the stretch here, who has stepped up and emerged but Daniel Bacho. He sure has, you know, and he picked up his third foul earlier in the second half, and it, I think he's been back for the last, he got back into the game at about the 11-minute mark or thereabout, uh, and I don't know if he's been back out since that time, so Coach Hester's is stuck with the big guy, and he's delivered. And he's, he's been, now Western Kentucky has gotten more buckets inside, but Bacho has really stepped up this last couple of minutes. Got that big block. He 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 took he's treated the ball in the rim kind of like this guy on the drums. <laughs> yes, no doubt. Well, he is one of the best shot blockers in the country this year. Yeah, what a revelation! It was the missing piece for Louisiana Tech and Telvin Hester for them to be a great team, a team that can make a tournament run. What they were missing was Daniel Bacho, and he has come up big down the stretch. You know, these two, two, these two ball clubs have put on an impressive uh, effort tonight, both ends for both of them. Could lead to a real interesting Conference USA basketball term down in Huntsville, oh, Alabama. Oh, man, that, that's going to be fun. Huntsville known for their rocket ships, and you're going to expect a lot of rocket ship games coming up down in Huntsville. Inside a minute to go. Still no shot clock. Chavez, dangerous, is fouled by Tegan Moore, which almost might be best case scenario. Because Chavez would have had an open three there if he wasn't fouled. Yeah, great pump fake by him to get Moore off of his feet. But you know, as you're, as you're saying, Chavez was gonna take one step to the side and pull up. And he's a 42% three-point shooter, 78% at the line. And now it's 15. This is the big free throw, though. It would make it a two-possession game if he makes it. And Western Kentucky has all their best offensive players tonight, for the most part, on the floor. McHenry, Lander, it's down and out. And here's Newman, and Louisiana Tech can really put the hurt on Western Kentucky now. Yeah, that Lander miss was, was almost down for him, would have been a big shot. 
So two free throws the rest of the way for Louisiana Tech. Both teams in the double bonus. Now if Newman makes both of these, it would still be a two possession game. He's been pretty good at the line tonight, hasn't he? Uh, he's four for five now. Yep. He's pretty good overall, though, an 81% free throw shooter entering tonight. And you see his numbers at the bottom of the screen. He's had another great game, 19 points now. The double team on McHenry. And a timeout taken by Brandon Newman. And Louisiana Tech down the stretch here. They were playing against the crowd, a weltering Hilltopper defense, great drives by Tegan Moore, and so far they've been able to fend off this spunky Hilltopper team. Yeah, the Hilltoppers could never get it over the top, so <laughs> to speak, so uh, in this one. Give Louisiana a lot of credit. They've been knocking down their free throws as they've had a few more opportunities going to the line in the last couple of minutes. But, you know, Jonathan, coming into this, tonight's game, did you think that uh, – Louisiana Tech was going to score 88 points. I mean, they, they scored 75 on the year, but the biggest thing that they, they're known for is their, is defending. I mean, what they give up uh, 63, 64 points, and here the Hilltoppers got 82. So it's been one heck of a pace of a game between these two ball clubs. Yeah. It was played at Western Kentucky's pace. It was. That's what uh -huh. they wanted it to be at. Yeah. 30 seconds to go in the game. Lander, the step back three. It was a little long, and it's off of Tyler Henry, but they'll review this, and they might have a good case here. Brandon Newman got pretty high there trying to tip it. So they'll go to the monitor. You know, that's interesting. The last uh, Coach Lutz must have had that feeling for, for Lander. Here we see that last uh, tip out play. It's really, really kind of hard to see here. You see anything, John? Uh, it could be off Henry. I thought it, at live speed, I thought it was off Newman, but that's hard to, I, I think it's off Henry's index finger. Yeah, it's close. I don't want to make everybody in Louisiana yeah. mad at me, but I think it was off Henry's index finger. Yeah. But Christian Lander did hit uh, a couple threes earlier in this half. Uh, and so Coach Liss might have seen something that he was playing well and had the confidence in him to line up a play to let him take a three-point shot later, later in the game. He's, he's taken two. One was in and out, and the other one just missed on that last uh, shot. I think regardless the result here, seeing Christian Lander back at full bore, that's something that you have to be encouraged. You don't want to have the moral victories at this time of year, but going into the conference tournament knowing you have Lander back playing well. Well, and you, you have to have depth. You know, if you're going to make it through a conference tournament and play three, possibly a you know, four games in a short order of time. I think three is the most that, that uh, it, the, the way the lineup is with the number of teams is lined up. But, but you're going to need some bodies. To two get more games. Two more games for Western Kentucky, both on the road. Florida International on Saturday. Liberty next Saturday. And then on Tuesday, March 12th, everyone goes down to Huntsville, Alabama for the Conference USA Tournament. And there's a late whistle on Isaiah Crawford. That's his fourth. Louisiana Tech is at home against the big one, Sam Houston State, coming up. That's on next, that's on next Thursday in the Middle Tennessee State on Saturday. So Ronnie Howard, the Georgia Tech transfer, did yeoman's work on the defensive end tonight. He's done much better at the uh, free throw line of late, too. Last ball game, he made 10 out of 11 free throws against Louisiana Tech. He's really been playing strong defensively, candidate for six man of the year. And another one. 20 seconds to go. Yeah, you have to get a quick trap here. If you don't get the turnover, then you're resorting to fouling. Nobody came over to trap the ball. Now, Louisiana Tech killing time. 
And that's going to that's going to be it for Tyrone Marshall Jr. Louisiana Tech did a great job in the backcourt there with their players advancing it, keeping it away from Western, not allowing the double team to come and get them. And Western was actually slow, even trying to get to that point. Uh, let's see, they let probably 11 seconds run off, I'd say. Way more. When they go back and watch that on film, they're gonna. it's going to be an agonizing nine or so seconds. So if Crawford, again, this is the situation. If Crawford makes both of these, if he misses them both, if he splits it, no matter what, it's a two-possession game. But you're looking at the sands in the hourglass are few for Western Kentucky. And Isaiah Crawford, likely the player of the year in the conference, able to close the door, or at least start the door swinging. 20 for Isaiah Crawford. McHenry, desperation three, short. Bacho the rebound in Louisiana Tech. Lived up to their bulldog name. They came in, they took on the weight of the arena and come out victorious, 90 to 84. Well, they just never relinquished the lead. You know, Western Kentucky got very close numerous times here in the last five, six minutes of this ball game, but could never get over the hump. Give credit to Louisiana Tech, hard fought game, uh, well-deserved victory for them. And you had Daniel Bacho and Isaiah Crawford, they were the headliners coming in and they did. They came through at the end. It was, seemed like it would be a quieter game for them, and it ended up not being. Well, and they, they responded. You know, both of them fouled out in the first matchup between these two ball clubs. So, uh, you know, they, they had a little extra motivation to come back and have a solid game, which they did. But, you know, the player there was Newman for uh, Louisiana Attack. He stepped up career high. It was. And speaking of which, our Kentucky 8-1-1 player of the game, Brandon, or Sean Newman Jr. I did it. Sean Newman Jr. <laughs> but he was able to knock down some threes in the first half, uh, able to take it in off the drive. Solid game. And then our Franklin Bank and Trust play of the game. Or excuse me. Yeah, here's the play of the game. Watch this exchange. Daniel Bacho, the chase down block when the momentum was swinging towards Western Kentucky. The play of the game brought to you by Kentucky 8-1-1 and the player of the game brought to you by Franklin Bank and Trust. And that takes us up to the conclusion. 90 to 84, Louisiana Tech puts themselves in best position possible down the stretch. Oh, exactly. You know, it all boils down to their next game against uh, Sam Houston as long as they take care of business prior to that next game. But uh, that should be an exciting game between those two clubs. Thanks for joining us, everybody, on Conference USA Basketball and ESPN. Louisiana Tech gets the win by six.